Well, it's time to fix the bane of my life, Twisted Line. Welcome to the Journeyman's Bits. As I say, line twist, the bane of my life. Now, I spend a lot of my time using fluorocarbon lines and line twists in them are an absolute nightmare. And the worst scenario is huge wind knots, laughingly called wind knots, because wind's not often involved, but you get massive tangles. You can't do a lot with it. And to re-spool, you're talking more or less 20 pound a go. Well, there are a number of factors that can be causing the twist. You actually, when you're spooling it up in the first place, you can put some twist into it. Uh, playing a fish on a drag can put twist into it. Actually using a bait runner puts twist in it. Just the fact that you're casting out and retrieving puts twist in it. Now, if you ask six different anglers, how would you put line on a spool? You probably get six variations of different ideas on how to do it. I mean, I've even emailed one reptile manufacturer and asked them the best way to spool their line on. And the end result was basically, if you're going to get line twist. The best way to do it is to follow the procedure that I'm about to show you. Anyway, so there's a number of ways you put twist into the line. There we have it. Masses of twisted line. And seriously, the only way I've really found out to do it is to walk the lines out. Because, and then run it through your fingers before you retrieve it. Now, you can see the amount of twists, hopefully, in that. Now, if I run that through my fingers a few times, and then fetch it back up. It's still a little bit there. 90% of it's gone. Do it once and twice more, maybe. You're not going to get much better than that. And as I say, the simplest way that I've found to get rid of it is to physically walk the lines out, run it through the fingers two or three times, and then spool it back on again through a damp sponge or a damp cloth or something to clean it whilst you're bringing it back over the grass. Anyway, this is how I go about doing it down my local park. So on the last trip to Blackthorn Fishery, I noticed that some of the lines were a bit on the twisted side from the winter sessions. So whilst I was there, I did walk out the lines, but with the limited bank space, I only managed to get out about 30 yards of the twist. So this morning, up very early, I've come to the local park to be away from the dog walkers and other people getting in the way. And I'm going to walk out the lines 100 and so odd metres, bring them back in and try and get some line twist out of them. So that's why we're here at this ungodly hour. Right, I've laid the lines out about 120 yards. Now I'm put the bail arm over to lock the line on the spool and I'm now walking out the length of the line between my fingers to try and take out that first bit of twist. And that's the line twist coming out after the first run down between my fingers. Okay, so having walked the line out again between my fingers to get out the excessive twist, I'm now going to read it back onto the spool through this instance a damp sponge or a damp towel or whatever. And if that doesn't work, nothing's going to do. You'll notice I'm doing this up against the hedge, not through the open field, because all the dog waters are, are beginning to turn up now. And the last thing I need is a dog running through this lot. Right, this is the last rod. I've walked all the others out, taken the line out 120 yards. I've walked it out twice through my fingers. The last time reeling it back in again. If there's heavy breathing, it's not the old man in the park syndrome. I'm knackered. I've done about half a mile at speed. And to make matters worse, my glasses are steaming up. Anyway, last time.
it's now sitting a bit better than it was in the first place. It's taken some of the twist out. Maybe not 100%, but it's taken a fair chunk out, which makes it a little bit easier to fish with. Because unless it's right, fluorocarbon can be a right nightmare. Anyway, that's me done.